Okay, uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are watching this in the world. And uh, welcome back again to another author's interview here in the Success Book Club. And now today, I am really, really honored to have with me uh, Evelyn McAleer. She is a spiritual life coach and she's from here in Northern Ireland. She's down the road, not too far from where I'm sitting. So it's absolutely brilliant to connect with her. And she has written, this is one of her books. We'll talk about other books as we go on. One of her books entitled, A Life You Want. Now I've read every single word of the book. It's absolutely fantastic. And this title really says it all. So welcome, Evelyn. Thank you so, so much for being here. How are you? Thank you very much, Richard, for your time. I am delighted to be here on such a beautiful day as well. It is. I do apologize. One of the sunniest days that we've had all year. And I've got you inside talking into a computer. So I won't keep you too long, but we're very grateful for you sparing this little bit of time. Thanks. Thanks, Richard. Look, what to tell you, I'm all summered up. I'm ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So let's just crack on. You know, the book is uh, particularly, let's say, around Northern Ireland, um, the UK in general. There's, it's a bit of a dis different perspective than a lot of us were kind of uh, brought up with. And I love it. I love that because I'm all into that kind of perspective. But just tell me a little bit about your journey. How do you come to write a book entitled A Life You Want? I'm intrigued by that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm intrigued myself, Richard, because it was one of those things that just happened. Wow. I had been working with a lot of people, coaching a lot of people, and very much about law of attraction. Mm -hmm. and always knowing there was something more. I knew there had to be, and many of us do, we go about knowing there has to be something more. So as I have said in the bit, or in the book, that bits of the jigsaw just started piecing together, and all them, ah, ah. And it made, there's something that always happens in our lives, and you just feel something, you know, you just feel it. So here I had lots of people, and everything when they had a certain steps and procedures and <clears throat> it was all happening for them. So I was asked, actually, I had a mentor at that time and they said, Evan, you should write a book. And I said, all right, I will. So I just put it in. It's layman terms. It's a simple book. And the reason as to why uh, putting that out was to let people know this is what you are. We never knew it. And this is what you are. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. And there's there's definitely two things in there. The first one, you just said it, we, you never knew it. We never knew it because it's a lot of that stuff that you said, people will feel it, but we're never really taught it. And uh, yeah, especially in this kind of uh, society. And then the other thing that you uh, mentioned there, which I'm really intrigued about, which let's talk about this first of all, the actual process of writing a book. So you said yes straight away. Was there was there any fear around putting your thoughts out there into the world? I mean, this book now that I'm holding is out for the whole world to read. So talk to me just what was it like to actually write a book and then have it published? Um, there was no fear. And the reason why there's no fear, if I say to anyone, because you must remember what your intentions are behind the book. And I have said to many, actually someone I was speaking to yesterday I, I just got goose pimples when I had a phone call from a person not going to come on to do coaching. And they said, I've been asking God. Now, I'll get to the word God shortly after this, but um, for our help. And that's exactly the reason as to why I done it. Because every night when I went to my bed, I didn't know how a book was going to be published. I didn't know how much it was going to cost. I knew nothing. But I always had one thing. I had a vision of a man a woman someone going to bed that night saying please god let tomorrow be a better day please god send me something because i was there myself and i suppose i was writing to that version of evelyn that once was there something that's easy that to say look hold on i just kept, i kept saying those words hold on hold on so richard what i done was i did nice i got myself at that time quarter to six in the morning wow to get up to start to write. Did I know what I was going to write about? Nope. But what I did do was I set, I always set, give myself time in the morning and I love listening music. I, everything seems to flow through music for me. So something soft, piano, no lyrics, no nothing because that disrupts the mind. And when people say the word, I'm in the zone, 
you know, when people's doing something they love, I'm in the zone. You see, that's the spirit. That's the energy that flows. It flows effortless. And the pen, uh, my hard copy was basically um, a journal and a pen. And I just wrote. And it's easy to write when you write from your heart and you write the truth. With, um, I'm letting go of judgment. Oh, did I write that right? So that's what I done. I just wrote. And you always know when enough's enough. Or have I done enough? I think that's it now. Now, I got to that stage, but I still didn't know how much it was going to cost or who was going to publish the book. <laughs> I didn't know any of that. But I always said an affirmation throughout it that the right people will show up at the right time at, and this will come at an affordable price for this book to go out. And that's exactly what happened because our words, thoughts, actions always create a reality as I've wrote about. So I had an interview with a wonderful lady on Easter Monday. And this woman had wrote a 20 books, I think at that stage. And I remember saying, Eileen, you've wrote 20 books. And I says, I've wrote one, which it says, who's your publisher? I, says, I don't know nothing about this. Well, you'll just have to go with mine. And you know, when people say things and they don't act on it, well, this was one woman that did act it. I want to say to Eddie McCourt, thank you so much, because she contacted, so up numbers me, him. He was on the phone, send me your stuff. And it was an affordable price. And that book, so that was Easter Monday. So the book went out on the 17th of May and people were receiving it, which was a big date for me. I turned 45 on the 20th of May and 45 was the year my mother, was the age my mother passed. That's why I wanted to make my 45th year account for something. So while people were receiving my book, I was in a penthouse suite in Tenerife celebrating my 45th birthday. And I just thought how amazing that life really is. And but more so what people have received from the book, Richard. Wow. Wonderful story. I love that. So you mentioned somebody mentioned to you, you know, why don't you write a book? So up until that stage, like what caused that person to say that? And, and also was there any other influences, you know, other books or other authors or speakers or coaches that has an influence on the book? Um, well, I suppose it's like everything in life. People see in us what we can't see in ourselves. For me, it was these stories that I was telling people about. So unless somebody had said to me, you should write a book. So it's like me coaching someone. That's why I had a coach. Because I can see stuff, I can see things that they perhaps cannot see. So that's why I wrote the book. For sure. I says, okay, it only takes one person to believe in you. One person for anything in life. You should do it. Okay, I'll do it. And so that was how that part of it came about. And what was the other question? Sorry, Richard. The second part was, what was your influences in the book? And me personally, you know, I'm big into the likes of Think and Grow Rich, the science of getting rich, you know, those type of authors and material. And I was wondering what, what would be your kind of influence in the past prior to writing the book in terms of the law of attraction and that sort of thing? Well, I had read The Secret. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. Because everything was starting to make sense. But what I wanted to do was put out a book that was for everyday people and yes Rhonda Byrne everyday woman but we have this perceived idea on people people probably have a perceived idea of me she's an author she's this and that and we think we can't do what someone else has done Oprah Winfrey everybody all of that but we see them at a certain status it's all right for them they can do this so for the feel of the book, the texture of the book, Deepak Chopra wrote a book, The Seven Spiritual Laws. And I loved it because of the size of it, the size of the text, the short chapters. And I says, this is going to... So I based the size of my book on The Seven Spiritual Laws, the size of my texts on the writing that was in his book. Because anyone that's writing a book will always say that, get a book that feels nice for you, what you like reading, small words... For me, they run in together. So that's how those things came about. But The Secret is a fantastic book. It's a lot of the things is quite based around money. And I never wanted people to have an attachment that when I get more money, I'm going to be happier. Even the title, A Life You Want, wasn't my first choice. I would have put something to manifest the life. But 
the word manifest would not have set well. So I put up um, a bit of a poll or a survey on one of my groups. If you were buying a book, what title? So people chose a life you want. But as I said in this third book that's going out, that I assist people to achieve absolutely the life that they desire from a place of peace rather than from a place of want. Because when we want, we'll always want. When we need, we'll always need. And we'll never truly be fulfilled. Love it. And I'm sure you've probably heard this a lot, but, you know, you could very easily listen to you all day. Like, I, I feel I don't really need to say much here. I'll just let you talk. And, uh, you know, the wisdom you're, you're sharing is phenomenal. So thanks for that. And actually, Thank you. there's something I don't know if you remember this, but I sent you, what well, was about halfway through it, and I sent you a little voice note saying, you know, one of the things that I really love about the book is the tone that it's written in. And for me, I think I said it's like, a, for me, it's a local tone, obviously, that I identify with, but I think you've summed it up better. It's for the everyday person, which is fantastic. You know, that's really, really good. I, I really, really love that about it. So previously there, you know, you talked about how our attitude, you know, you mentioned about, you know, what we put out is what we bring back to ourselves you know t- talk to the talk to the listeners a little bit about that you know, what's your thoughts around that yeah and it's it's a concept that people find very difficult to believe because we've just really gone through life believing you know today could be a good day or that and, and this is that's fine that's how we were but it gets to a stage in our life where perhaps we've had enough of a certain experience and we think i'm ready for change and normally most of the people that I that come to me are mid thirties onwards, but I have to say, Richard, a huge the young ones manifest love attraction. It's not a taboo subject; it's very mainstream, and what it is becoming mainstream in it all. Um, I am to apologise. I could get thrilled off there, and then I forgot the question again, Richard. Please edit this. <laughs> No, we're not editing it, but we're, we're absolutely <laughs> this, the great listening skills of a coach. <laughs> you know, as I said, I'm I'm happy for you to chat away about whatever way the you know the, the universe, whatever you want to call it, uh, flows. But actually, that could be a good thing to talk about. Earlier on, you mentioned God, and you said yes, we'll get on to God. So, and for me as well, there's some great insights in, on your way of looking at that. So, t- tell us a bit about that. Well, God was the only word that I knew. And that, that was my search, to go in search of God. For I wasn't happy in myself, but God will help me. God will help me stay in a marriage. God will help, you know. I always thought we had to do th- certain things that our man made rules. But that's all the rules that we knew. But God will help me because this is the right way. And, you know, and we, we do this and we stay in things and because we believe it's the right thing. God was, I, I used to get actually quite upset when I'd hear people say oh thank you universe and I think God must be so I cried how the people don't thank God they thank the universe but that was all part of my journey as well because God takes no offense to our word and it was Wayne Dyer that said the word water cannot make you wet it can be referred to anything when I say the word it the the most powerful words I do believe to speak the word of the God or the universe or the energy is I am, I am, I am that I am. So whatever we follow our I am by, so be it. And it's not that God is punishing anyone. It's not that God is outside of us. See, we're part of this. We are part of it. And that is something that nobody ever said, by the way, it's not outside you. It's always been, you have always been part of this. But you must experience life here in this human form to experience life, to experience the emotions. And what I do believe, Richard, that we are all in search of. There's two things that I know that what anybody that I'm ever dealing with or speaking with. Number one, they always believe that they're not enough. And they might not think, oh, no, no, I'm enough. No, because we're always seeking and searching and wanting and needing. And I'll do this. It's a belief. I need more. To be more. And another thing, what they are searching for, and they do not realize it until they find it, is peace. And it's peace here. Now, that does not mean sitting, meditating or chanting, but to be at peace with that which it shows up without. And that that shows up without, the truth is, it shows, whatever I am shows up for me. It's not 
that um, I attract what I want. I attract what I am. So if we wish to see a life that you want, you must be it first. If I want peace, I got to be peace. If I want love, I got to love me. If I want abundance, I got to feel and act because everything that I do today is creating my future. What has happened here today has been manifested from past thoughts, past actions past, to make today. But we get deluded in the illusion of thinking that this is it. No. What you speak of today, how you think, how you act, creates and creates and creates. And look, this is the miracle and the magic. And life never ceases to amaze me. The people that come into our lives, the events that happen, and they may look like tragedies, but it depends on how we wish to see it because it could be the best thing ever. Love it. And that leads us on so nicely. I knew this was going to flow really, really well because that's just the way things happen. So I mentioned to you at the start about health and things. Now, I've been through, actually, we, just for the viewers, you know, we don't know each other all that well. In fact, this is the only time, we, the first time we've spoken online, which is great. I love it this way because it's a more genuine conversation. So just a little bit about, you know, my background, I've had some ups and downs big time. And I've noticed, and it, this took me a long time to get to this stage, but for me now, gratitude is a massive thing. And obviously there's a big section in that in the book. So I'd like to talk a bit about that. So for me about gratitude, you know, I've got to this stage now where I am grateful for it all, like all the warts and all in the past. And I spent so many years beating myself up and thinking, why did I do that? What's wrong with me? You know, all these kind of things, mistakes that I made, money squandered, relationships squandered, a career that was pretty much squandered. And, you know, now I'm so grateful for it all. I'm, I, quite often I talk about it really humorously that I've gone from this to this or that to that, you know, uh, which is, this isn't a place about, about me, you know, this is about the book and stuff. But however, with that in mind, uh, there's also health as well. Now, so my health, I have had um, certain conditions since the day in I was born. Um, eczema, allergies, asthma, that sort of thing. That's just factual. And now it comes and goes and it goes ups and downs and all the rest of it. And I have to say also, I've, and this only happened very recently, I've got to the stage where I'm grateful for that as well. And the way things are today, you know, I've had things have progressed a little bit. Uh, ordinarily, I probably would have sent you an email saying, Evelyn, you know what? I'm not quite feeling it, even feeling that well today. But I'm at the stage now where I'm grateful for it all. And do you know what happens with that? It's now I feel so grateful that we are able to do this with whatever, even whatever I'm feeling, whatever I'm doing, you know? So really what I'm trying to do is relate this for people that are watching who may be going through big challenges. And I know if you told me when I was in the midst of all that and I was lying having with nothing left, basically no money, no nothing, and living back at parents and stuff, to be grateful, I would have said, Evelyn, you're bananas. How can I be grateful? What, what have I got to be grateful for? So what would you say to someone who would be in that kind of position, if any of that makes sense? Well, thanks for sharing. Of course it does, Richard. And if someone's there, they possibly don't want to hear. Sometimes it takes a lot of knocks, a lot of, you know, before we say, I got to do something. Something has to give here. So it's, uh, and, and I am mindful who I speak with because <clears throat> it's all about vibration and frequency. I mean, if, and this does not make anyone a less person than anyone else because we're all the same. We're all that divine energy. And the only thing that divides us is thoughts. So really where we are at in life, we have manifested it. And I know people are saying, are you kidding me? There's not a chance in hell that I would manifest this, but we have. It's not possible for it to happen. Otherwise, why events and happenings come into our life. But if anyone is feeling like that, and if you have come across this video, it's not by accident. You're meant to watch it. You're meant to hear this. And I want to tell you, you have more than you know. You have everything. The only thing is it's your mind is telling you otherwise. Look at your life. Look at your money. Look at your relationships. Look at you. Look at everything. What have you got? What have you got to show for yourself? But we have to get past them. And all it is, is one day at a time. And a, a huge affirmation I say to people is 
to remind yourself. And all you have to say is, I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. Guide me. And be aware and to remember to remember those words that you've spoke. Because somebody wants to come along. Somebody will come along and ask you for help. So remember, if the old ego steps in and prides there, it's like, no, 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 I'm grand. Because it'll keep tapping. There's, some, and there, there's things in us, Richard, that we know that it's not right. Where you felt those things that you lost in life, they weren't for you. Or perhaps you get a second go with something and then we see it and we behave differently and act differently towards it. And, and, and that's the blessings. I mean, we think of, Jesus, only I made that change where would my life be? Even if when relationships end and people take a look back and think, thank God I'm not in that. But unfortunately, they still hold on to the pain and the misery and the sorrow and therefore will create more pain, more misery, more sorrow. So the key is really to, for anyone today, please be gentle with yourself. Just to be, to know that you're safe, that there is more, much, much more in store for you. But you get the choice today. You get the choice today. You have exchanged a day of your life for whatever your way you're going to treat this today. And things do improve, but it's only if you want it. How much do you want it? Absolutely. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Absolutely fantastic. So as well to pick up, I suppose I completely know that my challenges, you know, I completely created it all, you know, including my health. And therefore it's my responsibility. And for me, a lot of, a, a huge first step in the journey was acceptance, you know, and also the realization, and let's talk about this a little bit, is the realization that I was doing a lot of things to please other people and to look a certain way from, let's say, Mr. Society or Mrs. Society, whatever you want to call it, perspective, you know, from what I should be doing. That word should was in my recovery 10, 10 years ago. Every second word, you know, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And there's no coincidence that it all came crumbling down because I wasn't doing it authentically for who I was, if any of that makes sense again. Okay. And it's great that you should say about the asthma because it's all to do with breath. The ability to trust, to trust in the process of life, that it easily flows through me. You know, I, and, and we give gratitude for that ourselves. But yes, of course, people put, fall into the people pleasing mode because, and this stems back, could be parents, could be school teachers, could be anybody when we from, were younger. And you probably, to get a reward, you needed to do good. And if you done bad, you got punished. Um, or perhaps if you didn't, you didn't get rewards. So this is the mindset. And we have um, a lot of things in, in where you live, who you're married, what you work at. God, that's great. God, that's great. Nobody ever said, are you happy? Are you happy? There's a guy that I often watch him in our town and he cleans the town. He does the street. And I watch that man and the pride and the love that he has. And I just think if everybody could rise out of their bed in the morning and be joyous at going to do their day's work, rather than, oh God, I bet they not tell somebody I'm a, a road sweeper. But I look at that man and think the love and the passion that he has for what he does. And so there's many of us go about with eyes wide shut, yeah. but we're afraid. We're just afraid. That's simply it because we... We have yet to get into the remembrance of the truth of why we're here and what we are. And we're just here to be of service to others. And I love in Deepak's book, there was um, Deepak, it sounded like Tupac there, Deepak Chopra's book, <laughs> where he speaks of the law of Dharma. And, and everybody would have heard of karma, but Dharma was that for your unique talents and abilities, there are always unique needs. And when those two are matched, there's where your abundance, there's where everything comes from. But unfortunately, when we go to do something, our first thought is, I want to make money at that. Yeah. So if you, all we have to do is live our joy and passion, not that we think, Christ, can I actually make a business out of this? Can I, what I even charge people for this? Because I love this. <laughs> I nearly, and, and that's the difficulty people have when they do what they love. They feel guilty of charging people money. <laughs> sure. Brilliant. Evelyn, absolutely fantastic. And 
one of the things in the book that I really love now is the whole aspect of the feeling. And you talk a lot about this, how, and this, this, I suppose, is let's talk to maybe one of the criticisms people would have the law of attraction. Oh, I've been saying in my head for ages about the car or the holiday or the house or whatever it may be, but it's not happening. And one of the things that I love, that the way you talked about it, and I've heard it, heard other people talk about it as well, but the way you put it again was just in, in layman's terms was brilliant about how you need to get into the feeling of it. Like what's that feeling all about? So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, you see, it's from the now that we create. This is the whole thing with energy. Once you have, so for example, the person that said, I wanted the car, and I put that thought out there. Okay, so the thought goes out and it's energy. We're just like human transmitters. So we can call that spirit or energy, whatever. So the thought goes out, I am going to get a car. Bing, thought goes out. Now, what happens is she's driving probably her own car this evening. She's saying, what a piece of shit. Sorry for that. <laughs> or saying, I never get a car. You see, then we contradict everything that thought. And so we just think by firing that thought that that's no. So you have to step through perhaps that fear end. And I can give so, cars have showed up for me and I didn't have to buy them, you know, just by thought or feeling and they show up at the right time. It's, it's like anything, but to, it's not to be attached to the outcome that this is going to make me a more happier person. When I get that car, oh my God, I'm going to be so different. Yeah, you will be for a week or two. And then the children will be in the back of it and they'll have chocolate and sweets. And it goes back to the same, you know. But for anything, I, I do with affirmations, and it just becomes habitual and you just become in that state, that gratitude for everything. And I have a wonderful car there that when I first started driving, I had a car 250 pounds once upon a time because that's all I could afford. And if someone was to say, Evelyn, oh, you know, in 10 years from now, this is what you're going to be doing. I wouldn't have believed it for starters because we can't see that far ahead. So there's a, a, a limitation sometimes on our belief, what we can do. Um, but it's that you see there was there's a place actually when you come off the from Arma when you're going up to head to Newry up that uh, slipway there and I always could hear I could always hear do you know when you just open a car I just that oh gosh so I remember having a, a vehicle and I could always hear this and I said someday I'm going to be down this road but I could feel it I could feel it you know and I looked forward. So as soon as I got my car, I tell you, I put her into sports mode and away I was and up that road and just to hear the sound of it. But it's, it's a, uh, you know, getting into that, that feeling as though we have, it. if it's joy that we wish to bring in, if that is going to bring me joy, what can I be joyous about today? How can I be joyous today to be that and just say, thank you. And it's not that we have to keep putting it out and out and out. It's the belief that stops it sometimes. It's our belief. And, and here's a simple thing. Now, myself and my good friend, Patty, practical Patty that I wrote about in the book, but myself and Patty, um, when we were we used to be on, we were always on the phone to each other, but we spoke as though things had already happened. Now, he was in employment, wonderful position, 15 years, always been employed, company car, high status, brilliant wage, blah, blah, blah. And... Uh, but he, he, there was more. There was more that he was to give. He's a great man at doing a happiness and working with teams and companies and that. So we used to speak on the phone. And I'd say, so how was your day today? Oh, I have to, would have told you this. And he would go into the story. And I says, fabulous. And I says, I'm sure they paid you well. Oh, would have told you what they give me. And that's where, you know, and he'd say, so what did you do today, Evelyn? Well, I says, we'll tell you what I, so this is what it's about. It's going back into that childlike imagination, having fun with it. And look, Richard, of course, it all has really happened. So whenever I did get the phone call from it, it was no big surprise because we'd already created it. But we didn't create it from a place of lack that he needed this to be a better person because it was the love of that which he was to bring to others. And it's just been coming like that for him, you know, because that's the way energy works. And it's the same for myself. That's how we connect. I and mean, we never have an attachment to the outcome. 
I have no idea where next year is going to be for me. I have none. Even this year, myself, my father passed away there in January. So there's things, yeah, there's things that come up and we never, ever, ever know. But I never will take a day for granted. Never. Because we don't know when that timeline is going to expire. And I never, and I would say to people, to look back on our lives, if we get that opportunity, do you want to look back and say, oh, I wished, I wished, I wished, I should have, I could have. Or do you want to look back and say, my God, look what you've done. Not for your, just for yourself or for your children or for everyone else. And you had a wonderful life. You had wonderful time. You had just everything. Because I feel it here, regardless of what I have, I feel it here, that I am the all. Love it, love it, love it. Brilliant. So, yeah, what you touched on there, actually, I've realized that that's my biggest fear, you know. Uh, some people talk about the fear of, you know, oh, what would happen if I started that little project or I'm so scared of, say, writing the book or whatever. My biggest fear, honestly, is waking up in 15, 20, 30 years time with the question in my mind, I wish I had tried that, you know. So I use that fear to my advantage because I want that to happen. Therefore, I'm not going to let it happen. Do you know what I mean? If that makes sense. So absolutely. And you can look back, then you can change it and think, you know what, Richard, when it comes your time, you're going to look back and say, by God, I'm amazed. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want to talk about, and then I mentioned about the book, we're going to read a tiny bit from the book in a second. But for me, I realized, you know, it all comes down to our relationship with ourselves. So you mentioned self-love a bit earlier, self-acceptance, self-image, whatever people want to call it. Can you, can you talk to you a little bit about that? You know, if people are in a really low ebb in terms of their thoughts about themselves. Yeah, and that is, that's, that's the crux of it all, really. And it's how we see self-love, you know, that's, it's egotistical. It's, you know, I says so that, or don't get above your station and da da da. Um, it's really about how you speak to yourself. Now, there is no way that we can blame anybody on this earth for speaking to us in a manner that's not befitting to us because it wouldn't hurt you unless you speak that way to yourself. And that's the truth. So that, as I say, life shows up as us. If I go out there today and someone says, oh my God, Evelyn, I just seen your interview. It was fabulous. You see, that's a part of the energy that is, it's just a regurgitation, you know, from, and I see that beauty within that person. And I'll accept and I'll say, yeah, but I, 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 it's, I, I see the beauty in that person. If I went out today and somebody says, my God, I watched that video with you and Richard. It was absolute bollocks. And I'd say, thanks. Thank you, because that's OK, because that person wasn't there. You know, it doesn't sit. Of course, people talk about things and it doesn't sit too well with me. But for anyone in that, again, is today, how do I speak to myself? Because you will have a list the length of your arm, how much time you ready to yourself. And you do it unknowingly. People say, oh, it's just a turn of phrase. But that matters because that's in the subconscious. Oh, look at the state he in. Look at this. I remember I danced and I had a group of women. And uh, over 60s, these ladies were. But I remember sitting with this beautiful woman. And she'd be said, Jesus, look at the size of my legs. Look at the size of these thighs. I couldn't get the jeans on in the day. And I says, OK, well, what would you like? Well, I'd like to be a stone lighter. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I says, well, fair enough. I says, should I go out there today? Maybe get a wee bit of a car accident, lose one of them legs. That might take up near enough a stone. Oh, don't be saying things like that. I says, well, look, the advantage would be you'd be nearly a stone. Well, I'm not saying the legs are stone weight, you know, but <laughs> you'd be a, good, a wee bit lighter if the thighs are that big. And definitely, maybe you would have less problems fitting into the jeans, for you'd only have one leg to trouble you in. Don't you be saying? And I says, well, then we got to be mindful, because you be careful what you wish for, because that's how things come about. And we think we're being punished. We are doing it. We are punishing ourselves. We give love and gratitude, and I thank my legs, and we th I, just to thank your body, even if you can today. Find something. You know how many miles your feet have carried for you. That's if you are blessed to have your 10 toes and feet. And actually, as I had spoke about before, there was a gentleman who had his two legs amputated. And someone asked him, why are you so positive with no legs? 
And he says, and why are you so negative with two legs? You see, we take everything really for granted. I thank my hands for the, that I'm able to lift this cup and drink the water. I, I am so grateful for every part of my body because it serves me. Even if I go to the bathroom, I say, thank you to my bile. Thank you to my bladder. Thank you. I will never, ever, ever take it for granted because what happens is people wait and they say, oh, that puts things into perspective. Well, I'd put it, it into perspective for a wee while and then we're off to something else. But that's the importance. That's how simple it is. And to love the part that you most resent because if you think that you're fat now or ugly now, give yourself another year or so because you keep telling yourself that the ugliness is that which is within the words that we speak to ourselves. It'll get worse and you'll get uglier and you'll get fatter. And that's the way life is. Every night before I go to bed, I look in the mirror and I say, Evelyn, it's younger you're getting. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so cool. No, I can identify so much with all that. Abs I mean, you're on fire. You're absolutely on fire. Like it's just flowing through, which is absolutely brilliant. And particularly that gratitude about being with self, you know, it's so, so key. So what I want to do is just, um, you don't know about this. Well, you, you know that I've done, done open the book at a certain section. Did I tell you I was psychic as well? Yeah, you can tell me. What are we going to say? <laughs> no, <I> said, <laughs> gratitude. Um, no, go ahead. So I've just um, opened it up completely at random and I thought I'd read just a few sentences and then we can have a chat about them. And uh, as you said, there's no such things as a coincidence. So whatever comes out of whatever people hear is exactly what they need to hear today. So this is it. Media advertising has a massive impact on scaremongering us into believing there is lack. We feed into that and go absolutely crazy, adding to the scaremonger scarcity tactics. Christmas, where shops may be just closed for one day, is enough to send people into a frenzy. And so we stockpile and squander money on the fear we won't have enough rather than just buying what is necessary. I bet you end up throwing a lot of what you bought out to waste. What do you make of that? How befitting that is. And what an absolute wonderful page that you opened today. And even like now, one day, Imagine all them days. It's not fantastic. Literally 15 minutes before the interview, I just thought, I just thought, funny enough, there's a chapter in the book for everyone who's listening on inspired action. And I don't know where the idea came from. I had my questions planned and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to open the book here at random, see what comes out and I'll let Evelyn talk about it. So there you go. Give us your... Uh, give Fabulous. Us your and how befitting it is to these day and age, minus the Christmas part, but... And look, we can go back and take a wee look at what had been happening, the whole toilet paper saga, the whole palava. And I don't want to insult people by saying, look, there's a lot of sheep because it's what we have fed. And, and I done it. I done it. I've seen me going into Malta. I know, dear Jesus, I forgot cranberry sauce. That was just Christmas and nobody even had cranberry sauce, but I thought I needed it. Yeah, okay. So... <laughs> You know, you can't have Christmas without. Um, but look, yes, media does. And everybody wants to sell. Sell, sell, sell. I always say, what's the important? What's your intention? What is your intention? My books were never put out to make profit, to make money, to what? If it, ha if it happens, it happens. Um, but we have to realize people want to make money and they think that there's no other way around making money. And the best way anybody will buy anything is if they're afraid. If they do not believe I am safe, I have enough, I am enough. No, because this is where we want and we need and everything is on the outside. So we're so easily controlled, easily manipulated. And of course, cha-ching. And off you go. And what we do in the meantime is we mindlessly shop. We mindlessly buy because of a lack, uh, that feeling of that lack that is within us there. And one thing that I do do, I do do is not watch the do do news <laughs> because it does not leave me any more joyous than at the start. So think if something is not going to leave me more joyous, more happier person, 
I ain't watching it. I ain't wasting my day today on something that's going to drop me onto a low vibration. And people find that. How do you exist without watching the news? Easy. Very easy. My father said that to me actually a couple of weeks before he passed away. He says, Evelyn, you know, you're not normal not watching the news. And I says, well, you tell me why I need to watch the news then. Well, he says, there's lorries there that can't get home across the port they were closing the porch and there's wives and of all them wives had the same idea as you not watching the news they wouldn't know and I said but you they would know because they have mobile phones the husbands would text them and say I can't get home well look uh, you know to think of something like that, I said look Dami here's where we we'll come to the understanding I'll allow you to watch the news and you allow me not to watch the news but I'll tell you the day that my father got his test result that he had COVID all of that all of them statistics, all of them figures, all of them deaths. Bum, 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 bum. Now, this is the thing that how, we, how we're going out, we're going out. How we choose to go out is a different manner. How we choose to experience this day is a totally different manner. The same thing could happen to you today as could happen to me today. And we could react very, very differently to it because I make the choice to do it and you choose to do that other thing. But we are being pumped, and I mean pumped, with fear, with worry, with panic. And it's doing the opposite. It's actually having a very, very detrimental effect. And this is the whole thing with energy. When you give something enough focus, this is the power. So not alone you give it thought, you give it thought. But a huge population of people will all give our thought to a certain thing. That's energy. And you're pumping stuff with energy. And of course it grows. Of course it grows. So, um, yeah, media, people just need to be aware of themselves. And there are advertisements and many things on it that make us feel guilty even of having stuff. You know, if you're sitting eating your dinner and some poor child, you know, is on the TV too that has nothing, yeah. you nearly feel guilty about eating your food. But that's why I said we, that we have more than enough. We have an abundance. And if we took an action today, which um, a group of ladies that I had, I said, there's energy attached to things. If we have bought, and there's dresses and there's clothes and there's this and there's that. And we change the way that we see things. And to know, just like my book, there was someone sitting there saying, please help me today. The clothes that you have sitting in your wardrobe that you do not wear, that you think, oh, sure, I'll, I'll fit into them someday. There is someone sitting waiting for that. There is someone saying, please, I don't have enough money to buy a coat. I would love a coat for somebody's manifesting a coat for winter and it's yours that's sitting in your wardrobe. Somebody's manifesting shoes for their children and it's your shoes that's sitting there that you are no longer using. So do yourself a favor today and rather than going into fear of panic and buying it, you need more, you have enough. And if you have more than enough, pass it on. Absolutely wonderful. Do you know I can share an insight on this because I would catch myself just, just last week, I caught myself so... I've been, able, I've been in a position now where I've, I've got myself out of the hole and I've been able to buy a, a lovely wee house here uh, and all the rest of it. And I caught myself last week, I was thinking, you know, just a wee negative thought about the house. Oh, you know, oh, I'd love to do that or I wish it was that way or the other way, you know. And then I realised, hang on a minute, even 18 months ago, you would have been so delighted if somebody had said, you're going to have this house. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes we forget that the things we have are the things that we once really, really, really wished for. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes that gratitude uh, wanes slightly. So I caught myself on that day and I was like, hang on a minute. And now every day in my gratitude is my house, the roof over my head. You know, I'm so, so, so grateful for it. And yes, there's things that I will improve. Of course there is. There's always will be that. But I kind of forgot in that moment a couple of, about a week ago was, that I, you know, I forgot how far I'd come, let's say, mm -hmm. both for that. So uh, that was brilliant. So I'm very conscious of your time. Evelyn. thank you so, so much. I mean, this has been absolutely amazing, selfishly for me personally, but, you know, definitely for the people watching, you mentioned the one person with the book. Now, you met people who are listening to this have probably heard me, you know, in the book club, they've heard me say this before that, um, I did a TEDx talk a few years ago, and that was my whole thing, was I don't care about the views, I don't care about anything, as long as it helps one person. That was my whole focus. 
I walked off the stage and within 30 seconds, someone came up, walking up to me and said, thank you. That's exactly what I needed to hear today. So I have no doubt in my mind, and that's my intention that I put out that this interview will help at least one person, you know, other than myself, of course, and uh, many, many others, you know, and I have no doubt that that's going to happen. So just to wrap up, Evelyn, I'm really conscious of your time because I know you have another appointment being the, the very uh, sought after person that you are. So thank you. <laughs> but before we go, I want you the opportunity to share with people, let's say there is that one person or many more people who've been really intrigued by your story and everything you've had to say, where can they find more about you? Where could they reach out, connect with you or, or other things as well? Okay, thank you, Richard. Um, yeah, you can get, I'm on Facebook, Evelyn McAleer. I am on Instagram, evelyn.macaleer, or my website is evelynmacaleer.com. <laughs> so they're all easy to remember. Brilliant. The books are on Amazon as well. And uh, I know we had the first book mentioned, so I'll just give this. There's a second baby Brilliant. and the first one. And the third one is now due out in April. What's the title of the second one again? Effortless. Effortless. And would you believe... What I tell you, to see this here picture and the, there's a photograph on the back of my third book. I didn't even have a hairbrush or makeup them days. <laughs> then we just got the photograph and I says, well, that's grand. So I didn't need no, you know, it was just like, take the photograph because it was in that moment. And they were the ones that, yeah, them, that's what we'll do. And that there, what, that is the primary definition of being really self content and having a really good self-image where the way it turns out is the way it turns out and I'm completely totally totally Absolutely. totally and also wherever you're watching this video I'm going to put links if it's on YouTube there'll be links in the description if it's on the Facebook group there'll be links wherever somewhere above below uh, for you to to find Evan as well so Evan thank you so much I can't wait to read uh particularly effortless I'm really looking forward to that and uh yeah, I'm really looking forward to connecting more again in the future. So thank you so, so much from on behalf of everybody who's watching this release. Really. So thank you. Thank you, Richard. I loved it. Thank you so much, everyone. You're welcome. Cheers. Bye.